Welcome back to the channel, Hobby One Kenobi here. I am continuing work on the 148th scale Hawker Typhoon from Hasegawa. The wheel wells to the Typhoon have been painted in aluminum color and now I begin applying Tamiya tape to mask the area off in preparation of the three-tone camouflage color. I really like using Tamiya tape for masking. I find that it is sticky enough to hold to the surfaces but also has less tack than other tapes. Next I like to use makeup sponges to fill the spaces in between the wheel wells. These will be trimmed to size, then I apply Tamiya tape on top of them just to make sure paint doesn't get through. Once these areas have been masked off, the model will receive its first coat of medium sea gray. The medium sea gray color and the dark green colors have been painted on, and now it's time to remove the Tamiya tape. I always find this to be a lot of fun when you get to reveal how well your paint job turned out or didn't turn out. It's important to pull the tape away from the area that has been painted. This will help prevent the paint from being lifted up. Tamiya tape can be a bit pricey and I have found that painter's tape does do a good job as well, at least with the stronger acrylic lacquer like Tamiya paints. I typically just use my fingers to pull the tape, but sometimes tweezers are needed. Don't forget to pull the tape slowly. Tearing it too quickly can also lift the paint. I will say that I have never had paint lift as long as I'm using Tamiya paints and Tamiya tape. The combination of the two work perfectly. Next, I'll start working on the missiles. The fins of these missiles could use some thinning, but I decided to just leave them. The missiles have received a basic green color, so I'll start applying Vallejo Olive Drab to the front of the missile. I found some excellent diagrams online regarding these particular missiles. This is an excellent explanation and clearly shows the types of stripes these missiles would have and what the stenciling might look like. There should be two circles at the tip of each missile, red and white. These will be achieved by simply dipping the missiles into paint. Once everything is allowed to dry, I once again mask the model off so that I could spray the yellow stripes at the front of the wings of the vehicle. I believe these are ID marks. If they're not and you do know the purpose of these, please let me know in the comments. In the past, I would simply tape off the area in hopes that it would be enough to protect the vehicle from overspray. This doesn't always ring true and I decided for future projects to apply paper over the entire model, just in case. Again, the reveal here with the tape is a lot of fun. Thank you. 
Next, I decided to open up this newly acquired airbrush from Grex. Actually, it's more appropriate to call it a spray gun, and this is the reason that I decided to get this particular model. When I spray gloss coats, the paint needs to go on consistently and wet. This is hard to achieve with a fine airbrush, so a spray gun allows more paint to flow. I am really excited to get to use this spray gun. Using my new Grex spray gun, I applied gloss to the missiles and several other parts that needed to achieve gloss in preparation for a wash. The spray gun worked perfectly. Just be prepared that the paint runs out fairly quickly. Once the gloss has dried, it's time to apply my standard wash of Windsor and Newton Artist Oils and Turpinoid. Once that wash has dried, I can begin removing the excess from raised areas with a Q-tip and a soft brush. Next, I begin applying and removing wash from the entire aircraft. You will see in these clips that I've already applied decals. Well, I started off filming the application of these decals, then ran into quite a few problems with them. I still don't know if the decals behaved poorly because of their age or if it was the use of Walther's decal solution with this particular set of decals. After they dried and after continued coats of the Walther's product, what resulted was a scarred and wrinkled effect on some of the decals. I had only ever encountered this on one other model, my Hawker Harrier, from a few months back. Needless to say, I had to stop filming and focus on the decals, so I hope you'll forgive me for not showing that disaster here. If you have any suggestions as to what might have caused the issue, feel free to comment.
Finally, the model received a few light coats of Mr. Color Flat Clear. Well, that does it for this video. Please take a moment to like the video and subscribe to the channel. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.